Can we power LEGO contraptions using air power? Well, it depends how we blow them. By using some gearing, we can amplify the torque provided by the air. Now, we end up with the final output being much slower, but if we can spin a turbine very fast by concentrating some fast-moving air, we can get some pretty reasonable output power. Unfortunately, this little dude is too small to carry his own air tank, and I want some onboard power. So today, I want to test out some different turbine designs to find out which is best to power our vehicles from an onboard air tank. Now some turbine shapes can spin slower, but may actually capture more air, while others might spin very rapidly, but might be inefficient. We need to find a good balance. So how do we test this? Well, previously I made this generator that runs on pressurized air supplied by this turbine. But I just guessed what turbine shape to use, as I had no idea what was actually good. And I think we can actually borrow this concept to test which turbines can spin our output the fastest. If we attach this gear reduction to a wheel of magnets, and then attach a turbine, now, when we blow the turbine, we spin the magnets. If we then take a coil of thin wire, and anchor it near the magnets, then our turbine can generate a small current. Let's visualize it using this little LED. Attach the LED to the coil of wire, and then when we spin the turbine using some air from a compressor, we can see the LED flashing as the magnets pass the coil of wire. This compressor will fill this 2 liter bottle up to 45 psi, and we'll use this to drive our generator. So, my plan is to use this voltmeter to measure the output, telling us which turbine is moving the fastest. Alright, let's test our first three-bladed turbine design. For this one, our multimeter measures a top voltage of almost bang on one volt. Nice! Now, let's try our next turbine. This four-bladed turbine seems to be a significant improvement at a peak of 1.5 volts. And what about this small turbine with six rounded blades? Yeah, clearly this one is very inefficient and only gives us a peak of 0.69 volts. Then we've got this, I uh, guess, 40-bladed turbine? It's just a gear. Now this one screams, giving us a peak of 2.17 volts. Now this one is promising, but it's obviously not capturing that much air. Now how about this three-bladed turbine? It's got fewer blades, but it can capture more air. Yeah, well, apparently not amazing, at 1.08 volts. Now this turbine is the one that I used in my previous generator, based only on a hunch that it should perform well. And indeed, this one does seem good, generating 3 volts. Not bad. Finally then, we've got this monstrosity. It's big and heavy, but it can likely capture quite a bit of air. Hmm, but we only get a peak of 0.89 volts. Now, these results are interesting, but like many things in life, speed isn't everything. It's really how much power we can output. So to truly test how much work can actually be done, let's attach a load to the turbine. These are weighted bricks. And if we pop them into this cradle, and drive it from the turbine, well, now we can see just how much work the turbine can do when it's under load. This is quite a significant 25 times gear reduction, so this should allow us to spin the turbine very fast, increasing the torque by about 25 times. And indeed, if we apply some compressed air, we can pull the weighted cradle back up again. So let's use our 2 litre bottle again to test these turbines with a consistent air source. We'll start with our 4 bladed turbine again, and I've added 2 weighted bricks to the cradle. Now this one stalls at about 6 inches above the ground. Next, let's try this big lad. This one definitely seems to capture more air. And it's somewhat slow, but it does manage to lift the load all the way to the top of the table. Then, we've got this small one with six blades, but it just doesn't seem to be able to generate much torque, stalling after only a couple of inches. This three-bladed turbine? seems to suffer a similar fate, unable to keep rotating under load. Out of interest, what about this other three-blade design? Hmm, well, not much better. Clearly more blades are needed. So what about loads of tiny blades? Hmm, what a lovely noise. 
and clearly even though it's wasting loads of air, it at least does install, making it nearly all the way to the top. Finally, we've got our original turbine. And this one races to the top, and still has plenty of juice after making it there. So clearly this guy's gotta be our winner, striking a balance between capturing enough air, while also having enough blades to prevent stalling. So now we have our winner, it's time to make our engine. I'm going to try to make a partial enclosure to improve efficiency, but for whatever reason, using this sort of enclosure created terrible speed wobbles in the turbine. So I'm opting for a partial enclosure made of Technic. Hopefully this will help direct the flow of air over more of the blades, wasting less of it. And indeed, it does seem to work well. While keeping it small and light. Now the real challenge is directing the flow of air into precisely the right angle on the blades. So, I came up with a design that'll allow us to make minor adjustments to the inlet when it's in place. An elastic will put tension on the inlet, pulling it into an angled position over the blades. The closer we can get the inlet to the blades, the better our efficiency will be. Right now, you can see we're a few millimeters away from the blades, but these rails allow us to pull the inlet even closer and the blades still run freely on only a gentle breeze. Next then, we need to control the air being supplied to the turbine. So I'm going to try and reuse this mechanism to crimp the pipe, which I created previously for my pneumatic gun mechanism. This L piece allows us to crimp the pipe to close it, and then push it back open again. Then we can use a linear actuator to control it. Now this vehicle needs to be light, so to motorize this mechanism, I'm going to use these tiny motors from Circuit Cubes. I'm not sponsored by the way, I just really like these little things. Now this tiny Bluetooth battery unit allows us to control the motors from a phone. Pretty nifty little things. So let's stick it on the crimper and give it a test. Well, it's a little slow, but it does seem to work. Now how does it perform when we attach our air tank though? We'll start by crimping the pipe. And now when we open the pipe... Come on... Okay, well it does work, but it's way too slow to respond. So instead, I developed this mechanism, which should crimp the pipe much quicker by simply putting pressure on the pipe. Then we'll motorize it using the same little motor. And the idea here is we can feed the pipe through these holes, and the linear actuator will just directly press on the pipe. Okay, let's see if this works. Then we can open the valve. Hey, yup. And it responds very quickly when we squish and unsquish the pipe. This is exactly what we need to control the throttle in our car. Then of course, we'll need to gear down our turbine engine so it'll have enough power to drive. And I'm hoping this 25 gear reduction should be enough. Okay, let's connect some air to test it out. By the way, if you like experiments like these with LEGO and technology, feel free to like or subscribe, or you can check out my Patreon to see behind the scenes footage on how I make these contraptions. Cheers! Now, it seems a 2 litre air tank provides a good 5 seconds of strong power, and then another 20 to 25 seconds or so of gradually reducing power. Okay, well, we have power, but now we need steering. We'll use another mini motor and a worm gear to control our steering, and just in case we can't get much driving out of an air tank, I want to know if we can drive the engine directly from the handheld air compressor. And yep, it looks like we can. And in fact, I think we're probably getting an even better top speed here. Well, at least we now have a backup plan. And finally, let's turn this thing into a real car. We'll stick our throttle control here, chuck on a valve for recharging, and pop the bottle on with an elastic band. And voila! We have an air-powered car with steering and throttle control. After we're charged up, and we open the valve, and activate the throttle. Excellent, we have power. 
Well, the moment of truth arrives. Can we actually power a car using a small 2 liter bottle of air? I actually wanted to use a much larger bottle, but I just couldn't find one. I'm not expecting to get much distance out of a single air tank, but let's see what we can get out of it. When? And she's off. It's not particularly fast, but I'm delighted it's able to move at all. Though on our first attempt, we forgot to steer and chucked her into the ditch. On you? Our second attempt was much better, and Katie controlled the steering masterfully. Now, to be honest, the power on a flat isn't great, and I had to use smaller wheels to get it to run properly. So here, we're filming on a slight decline, which allows the turbine to run really nicely, getting us some reasonable speed. I just love the noise it makes when it gets up to speed. So after all, we get around 20 seconds of runtime on this 2 liter tank, and I'm sure it'd run way better and longer with a larger tank. Go on, freewheel! Now of course, we can also run this car for as long as we want from a handheld compressor, so let's give that a try. Using this compressor, the turbine can get up to a much greater speed, and can also maintain it. With a little nudge to get her moving, it takes a little bit to get up to speed as it's dragging a length of silicon tubing behind it, but with a consistent air supply it continues to build speed. Now I'm sure it's possible to build a much smaller and lighter vehicle that could run way faster than this one directly from the compressor, so perhaps we'll have to try a drag racer next. We'll see, we'll see.